In this video, I assume you are already familiar with the chain rule for full derivatives. As is covered, for example, in my video titled The Chain Rule earlier in this Machine Learning Foundation series. Now, we'll extend that chain rule theory to the partial derivatives of multivariate functions. Okay, so in a situation where we have nested univariate functions like this, where u is a function of x, and then y is a function of u. In that kind of situation, recall that the chain rule for full derivatives would be something like this, where we can calculate the full derivative dy dx by calculating the derivatives, the full derivatives of these nested functions. So we can calculate dy du, and then we can separately calculate du dx and then we multiply dy du by du dx, thereby canceling out these two du terms and leaving us with dy dx. So this allows us to have potentially a very long chain in machine learning, maybe hundreds or thousands of functions chained together, but ultimately giving us this full derivative from our output all the way through to some deeply nested input. Well, so. With univariate functions like this, the partial derivative would actually be identical. I don't think you would use that very often, but if you did, it would be identical. So in this case, dy dx, the full derivative would be equal to the partial derivative dy dx because there's no other inputs involved. It's a univariate function nested inside a univariate function. So if you were to compute partial derivatives like this, they would be, you know, del u del x would be exactly the same as du dx. Del y du would be exactly the same as dy du. And so you'd get the same result either way. So be unusual uh, to use partial derivatives in this situation. Much more common to use partial derivatives, as we've seen throughout our discussion of partial derivatives, when you have a multivariate function. And in this situation, the chain rule suddenly becomes more interesting. So let's say that we have a variable u that, based on some function g, has two inputs x and z. So this is a multivariate function. And that u, that output from our multivariate function g, flows into this other function f, which provides us with y. So this function g is nested inside of the function f. Now we can diagram what's going on here. We can diagram the flow of the variables. So starting with x and z, we need both of these inputs in order to obtain u. And then y solely depends on u. So there's this univariate relationship here, this multivariate relationship that u depends upon. So these kinds of diagrams, you'll see we'll, we'll work through a number of these together and these make understanding what partial derivatives you can calculate in any given situation much easier, as well as ultimately calculating those partial derivatives. So I do recommend breaking down your chained multivariate functions in this way, your nested multivariate functions in this way, because it then makes calculating partial derivatives pretty easy. So let's say we'd like to calculate del y del x. Well, in order to do that, we can calculate the partial derivative del u del x as here, and we can separately calculate the partial derivative del y del u as represented here, and then we can multiply those two partial derivatives by each other, del u's will cancel out, and we'll be left with del y del x. So that gives us del y del x, and then if we're interested in del y del z, similar kind of situation, we can calculate del u del z, and we already have del y del u from earlier, and you can then multiply that del y del u by del u del z. Del u in the numerator here cancels out del u in the denominator here, and you're left with del y del z. Now when we have multiple multivariate functions, the chain rule gets really interesting. So let's say, we have some variable y that's a function of u and v. 
u is a dependent on this multivariate function g, which has x and z as inputs. And v is also dependent on x and z. So just like we saw on the last slide, an easy thing to do then first is to create this tree of the relationships between the variables. So you could start off with y and say, okay, y is dependent on u and v, and u itself is dependent on x and z, and v is also dependent on x and z. So you capture everything together in this single tree. From there, it's relatively easy to calculate partial derivatives. So let's say you'd like to calculate del y del x. So we can look at our tree and see that in order to calculate that partial derivative del y del x, we're going to have to trace down two branches. We're going to have to trace down this u branch as well as this v branch to get to x both ways. The partial derivative wouldn't be complete without both branches. We wouldn't have a complete picture of how y is influenced, how y is a function of x. So in order to do that, we can sum together these two separate branches. So in order to calculate del y del x, we calculate del y del x down each leg individually. So here is the u leg. So del y del u times del u del x gives us this full leg here. And then this leg here is captured here with del y del v and then del v del x. We simply sum those two legs together, and that gives us the overall partial derivative, del y del x. Same thing for del y del z. So we have two legs that we need to trace down, and so we have two separate terms that we add together, one representing the u leg and the other representing the v leg. So generalizing what I've shown you with examples in the past two slides, we can have a complete generalization of those concepts. If you have some output y that's a function of any number of variables u, so up to m variables u, and each of those variables, we can call any one of them uj, so j is this index here, it could be one, it could be two, it could be all the way through to m. So whatever u, u is itself a function of many inputs, and we could have up to n inputs, x, right? So x1, x2, all the way through to xn. This means that for any given i, so iterating over any one of these possible inputs x, all the way through to n, the complete partial derivative, del y, del xi, say del x1, all the way through to del y, del xn, is given by this formula here, where that particular partial derivative, say del y, del xi, is computed by summing together all of the individual legs. So, uh, you can see each of the legs here, there could be any number of them depending on how many of these intermediate variables u, m there are, but you just sum them all up and that gives you your full partial derivative. So you don't need to memorize this or anything. I think that kind of understanding it intuitively as we work through it on the last couple slides is probably all you really need, but if you did want the full generalization, here it is. Kind of fun, right? Up next, I've got a few exercises to test your comprehension of the chain rule.